Hey there Tubes, here's a video for a fellow YouTuber, not too fast for you to see. And this is my dipole antenna that I built a couple months ago for my CB radio. And uh, not too fast for you to see, I think uh, is Mr. Jim. Uh, he just built one of these about three weeks ago. And uh, I was telling him, because he, he put a couple videos up of it, I said I have one just like it, I built one... Uh, it's exactly the same concept. It's a half wave dipole, and so I wanted to do a video of it, uh, you know, just to show him, show him what I got, give him a few ideas, and even if he, uh, I mean, his design works fine. But if he wanted to, if he wanted to take any ideas, of course, of course he could. But either way, I never got around to it. But I decided still to put something up, just so uh, anybody else working on one of these or thinking about doing one of these can get some ideas. So. Uh, We'll start with the two elements, because of course it's a dipole, dipole, di meaning two, pole, two elements, two poles. Uh, both are a quarter wavelength long. Uh, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail with that, because you can you can get the information on that online. You can learn about half wave dipole, and you can also, uh, there are calculators to figure out what the length is. These are about 102 inches, but not exactly. So the bottom element, which is our ground element, is just three quarter inch copper pipe copper tubing, nothing special about that. I didn't have a uh, one that was the right length so I ended up soldering uh, two together just to make it long enough and luckily I was able to find uh, some older pipe that doesn't need a coupler, right? it has the, uh, the, uh, the flared end on it so I was able to solder them together. The camera's having a little trouble focusing but uh, that makes it a little bit stronger. And then the other end it's a piece of, I've got a spare piece here, it's a half inch aluminum tubing. And to make this long enough, it was they're about six and a half, six and a half feet long to start with. I think they came from an old greenhouse or something. But what, whatever they came from, I was able to cut this one here, about two and a half feet long, and then take a hacksaw, take it, cut it down the middle. I did that twice, so there's four openings, and that allows it to open up, so I can slide it on, and then tighten it with the uh, with a hose clamp here. But that reason I have that, besides making it long enough, is that I can now slide this and adjust it to make it longer or shorter, and that goes for tuning it. And uh, of course, we'll get into tuning later. Uh, all that information, the technical stuff. Not that I don't know it, but you can find that information online, or I could always, upon request, do another video. Uh, my coax comes up. I have it uh, just lying on the ground right now. It goes up through the center, center, not through the center of the bottom element, and uh, I believe not too fast for you to see has his mounted. Uh, it's mounted by the middle with a piece of wood, and so his coax goes up next to it, which is where his mast is, and then comes over to the middle. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. Mine's just a different design. Uh, don't think there's any real problem with it. There's a possibility of getting some feed line radiation and what that is is just a real quick technical lesson a dipole is called is it's a balanced antenna and coaxial cable is an unbalanced feed line so that causes uh, some stray RF uh, to travel down the shield and uh, some people you know, they'll call it you're getting RF in the shack and that can cause a lot of problems uh, it can cause interference. Uh, it'll send your SWR up, so that's something to avoid. I used to have a uh, air choke, which was this piece of wood. It's called an ugly balance. You can look that up too. And all it was was 20 turns of coax, and it made a big coil. And what that's supposed to do is dissipate the RF and keep it out of your shack. Uh, I haven't. I used to have it up. I took it down because I had this antenna down when I was. Uh, trying to plan plan my ham antenna but I've, I've set it back up because I've gotten a little held up with that uh, I haven't noticed much of a difference with it off so I'm, I'm gonna leave it off I'm not gonna use it but you might find that you need it, it just all depends on your setup there's some some things that'll make differences that I can't you can't control there are so many different variables that if you if you find you need that you gotta do what you gotta do I mean it's not like that four inch piece of uh, PVC was expensive. I had that lying around the house too. All these parts here, this antenna I built, everything except the center box here I built from uh, stuff I had around the house. And all this is is like a three three dollar, six dollar, pretty cheap, three quarter inch uh, PVC conduit box, junction box. 
and so I have my my coax comes up through the middle and through the bottom element that's held on with a uh, hose clamp. My coax, which assuming you know that coax has a outer shield and an outer braid, I should say, and a shielded inner signal wire. So your braid goes to your bottom one, that's your ground, and then your signal goes to the top one. I just have them screwed on there, nothing special. Uh, I could have soldered them for a little, little bit safer, uh, a little, little less likelihood of it breaking, because you can actually see some of the wires are broken. A little less likelihood of them breaking and causing uh, frying my radio if I wasn't paying attention to the SWR meter. But anyway, that's not something to wor worry about a whole lot. I'm not worried about it. I'm only running four watts. It's only a CB radio, so if I do fry it, not that I'm encouraging consumer-like habits of just buying a new one, but point is, it's not a big deal. Anyway, uh, oh, one other thing I wanted to point out. You'll notice I have this piece of wood here. It's about four feet long, but the, the actual difference between uh, the antenna and the mast is only about two feet. And the reason for that is somebody told me the dipoles are very sensitive to things around them, particularly metal. So, of course, this mast here is a piece of galvanized steel, so it's, uh, it's about as metal as you get. And so what I did was I just have a... It also made it easier for me to mount it. I have some U-bolts here to hold it onto there. And then here I have some pipe hangers. They, they used to be copper, but you know, they're all rusty now. And just to be safe, I didn't know if it would make a difference, but I actually put some uh, rubber so the, uh, the antenna is still independent of this. Even though the board is insulated, so I don't, I don't have to worry about the grounding out. But just to be sure, uh, I put that in there. To, uh, just better safe than sorry. I think that's about it. Just wanted to give you a little preview, not a preview, but a little show about my antenna. So if anybody has any questions or comments or anything, go ahead and drop it down there in the comment section. Uh, if anybody does have questions about SWR, there's probably lots of videos, but... I could always do one. I'd be more than glad to. And then this Balan, Ugly Balan, Google that. You'll find lots of information on it. So thanks for watching. Okie dokie, tubes.